Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is make matrix beautiful and it is a medium level problem. So this problem was a bit interesting and let us see how we can solve it. It says that a beautiful matrix is a matrix in which the sum of each row and each column is equal and we have been given a matrix of size n cross n. We have to find the minimum number of operations that are required to make the matrix beautiful. In one operation, we can increment any value by one, right? So we can increment any of the cells by one. Now, the expected time and space complexity is as follows. The type complexity is n cross n and the space complexity is O of n. Now, let us see how we can solve it with the help of this particular example. So the very first observation about this problem is, let me first write the sum of all the rows and all the columns. Right. So let's say I am writing the sum first. So I am writing the sum of all the rows and all the columns and uh, let's say this is row 0, this is row 1, this is row 2, this is column 0, column 1 and column 2. So if I write the sum of row 0, it is going to be 6 for row 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and for row 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right. Now I am writing this is for the rows or let me also write R0, R1 and R2. Now I will be writing the same thing for columns. So it is C0 first. So it is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So C0 sum is 8. Now for C1 it is going to be 6 and for C2 it is going to be 7. Right. So these are the values that I have. Now I want to make all of these values equal. Right. So I want to make all of these values equal. The very first thing, the very first thing I know that I can only make them equal if all of them are equal to the maximum value. Why is it so? Because the operation that I am allowed to do is to increment an element. As soon as I increment any element inside this matrix, at least one of these values will get incremented. Right. So the only update we can make to all of these values is to increase them. Right. This is for sure. Now, if we are trying to increase them, it is only possible to make them equals to the maximum element to provide the minimum number of operations. Right. So, we can also make them all equal to 10, we can also make them all equal to 12, any value greater than 9. But to minimize the operations, we need to only make all of them equals to 9. Right. So, this is our first observation. Now, let us see if I want to make, let me just calculate the differences. Right. So if I'm trying to calculate the differences, if I want to make the row 0 is equal to this particular row 1 because it is the maximum value in that particular case, I'll have to increment this value by 3, right? For row 1, I don't have to do anything because it is already equal to 9. For row 2, I have to increment this value by 3 again to make this equal to 9. Similarly, for columns, I have to increment this column by 1 or the sum of column 0 by 1 in order to make this particular column sum equals to 9. Similarly, it goes for 3 here and for column 2, we have to increment it by 2. Right. So now, we just create a matrix and you will be able to understand where I am getting. Now for row 0, I want to increment the sum of this row by 3. Right. So if I want to increment the sum of this row by 3, I can place the total sum anywhere either here or here or here. Right. I can also try to break it into different columns, but I need to place it in this row only. Right. So let's say I place it here exactly at column 1, 3 like this. Right. That means this is the difference that I am trying to place. So in the original array, you will increment this particular cell by 3. Right. So it is going to take you 3 operations. Now if I place this element 3 here, you will see that row 0, I have incremented the sum by 3. But the sum of column 1 is also going to get incremented by 3. Right. This is for sure. Now similarly, for row 2, I need to find a place to this particular 3 so that the sum of this particular row 2 increases by 3. Now I can try to place that particular 3 in any one of the cells or I can even try to break it into different parts. Right. So one way of doing it is I place 1 here and I place 2 here. Right. So why am I doing this? Because column 0 needs to get its sum incremented by 1 and column 2 needs to get its sum incremented by 2. So if I place it here, 
the sum of column 0 is also get, going to get incremented by 1 and for C2 if I place 2 here the sum of column 2 is going to get incremented by 1. So for row 2 it is a total equivalent of 3 and I have divided into 2 parts so that is why column 0 and column 2 are also getting its benefit. So we have seen that if I place any value or if I increment any value in any of the rows the columns are also getting affected right. So I don't need to increment any value twice right I can choose a value from here and I can try to divide it in such a way such that it also helps the columns and I don't have to increment all of those values again. Now one very interesting part is that the sum of all of these values in the row is going to be equals to sum of all of these values in the column. You see in this particular case the sum of values in row is 6 and the sum of values in columns is also 6. So let me just discuss a proof why is it true. So if I create one more array. So let me just take row 2 column 1. So this is the cell that I am talking about this particular cell. So this is row 2 and this is column 1. Right. So let us say I increment this particular value by 1. Right. So earlier it was 2, earlier it was 2, now it has become 3. Right. So the total sum of this particular row is now going to be 3, 3, 6 plus 1, 7. Right. Now the value of R2 which was initially 3 is going to get reduced to 2. Similarly for column 1, now that this particular element is 3, so this element is 3. The total sum of this particular column is going to be 3 plus 2 plus 2 that is going to be 7 as well. So now the total increment that this particular column needs is again 2. So you see as soon as this particular 3 was reduced to 2, 1 3 from here was also reduced to 2. Now the total sum of the difference in rows is equal to 5 and the total sum of the difference in columns is also, also equal to 5. So no matter which element I change, if there is a change in the difference of row values, then there is also going to be a corresponding change in the difference of column values, right. Now I know that the sum of all the row values and sum of all the column values is going to be equal. What are these row and column values? These are nothing but actually the difference, difference between the current sum of that particular row and the sum that I need and that need is equal to the maximum sum that I have across all rows and columns, right. Now I know two important things that the sum is going to be the same in both the difference of rows and columns and the second thing is that I can always take some value from here and I can divide it across multiple columns. For example, if row 0, row 1 and row 2 were like this 3, 0, 0 and column 0 column 1 and column 2 were like this 1, 1 and 1. So you see the sum is still the same and I have a 3 here. I can divide this 3 into 3 different parts so that row 0 will look something like this plus 1 here, plus 1 here, plus 1 here. So row 0 will total have an increment of 3 and each of the column 0, column 1 and column 2 will have an increment of 1. Right. So this is exactly what we needed. That means there will always exist a way to divide the values among the rows and columns. So the final conclusion is I can only make one operation. I don't need to make this operation twice. I can make an operation on either rows or either columns and it will also help me to adjust the values of the other part as well. Now at the end I don't have to do anything. I can to choose any one of them. I can either choose the rows or I can choose the columns. I have to take the sum of all the values of these differences and that will be my final answer. The first thing that I proved was that all the rows and all the columns needs to be equal to this particular value. Right. The second thing is the sum of the differences, differences means the value that I need to add in this particular row to make it equal to the maximum row is equal to 3. Right. These are the differences. The sum of differences of rows and the sum of differences of columns is going to be equal because if I make a change in any of the cells, a corresponding change is also going to be there in the other half as well. Right. Now after we have discussed this, we have also discussed that if they are equal, I can take any value from here and divide it equally or divide it in a corresponding manner to the other half as well. So there will always exist a way to divide these values and at the end you can just take the sum of any of those rows or columns as your final answer. Right. So this would be the solution to this particular problem. Now let us have a look at the final code. So you see what I have done is I have created a vector of values of size n. Now I initialize my need variable with 0. So it is going to store the maximum value. Now I am just uh, running a follow from 0 to less than n and for the current row and current column I am going to calculate the sum. So it is initially equal to 0. Now I am running a j loop again from 0 to less than n and I am calculating the row sum as row plus is equal to matrix of j i. 
So you see in this particular case, the value of i will remain fixed and the value of j will be changing, right? So I'll be able to calculate the sum of all the rows in a fixed particular column. Similarly, in this particular case, I have the value of i will be fixed and the value of j will be changing. So I'll be able to calculate the sum of all particular columns right, in some fixed row, right? Now at the end, I can update my need variable as maximum of need comma row comma column. Right. So this is going to store my need value or the maximum sum that I need. Now I can take values of i as row. So you can also take as column here. It doesn't matter. And at the end, I have initialized my answer with zero. I'm traversing through all the values and updating my answer as answer plus is equals to need minus i. So need is the maximum value that I've calculated and i is the current value. So in place of i here, you can either take all the rows or all the columns. It doesn't matter. You just have to calculate the difference of any one of them. Right. So the total difference is essentially going to be the same. So it doesn't matter if you take rows or columns. Now at the end, you just have to return your answer and this will be your final solution. So this was all about today's problem of the day. Now let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and the solution is absolutely correct. So you see it passes all the test cases. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos are not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of course and you can always subscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends and until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.